Awesome. It's recording. Okay. Does this button work? Yeah. So, hello everyone. My name is Guillermo Sanchez. For those that weren't able to meet me last week, I am one of the founders of the co-founders of the Ship Tech Committee, and through the Tech Committee now we're hosting the Ship Web Dev course that we're offering it. The reason why we wanted to offer this is because I've been teaching iOS for the past two quarters and it's through a nonprofit called CodePath and it's been going really well. We've been able to help a lot of students, about 15 students so far, get their first internships through software engineering or iOS specifically as well. And so I thought maybe we can implement this to web development because CodePath does not offer web development course, we only offer Android and iOS development. So I wanted to expand and I'm doing this like as my own project, collaborating with other Ship Tech Committee members. And let's give it a try. But moving forward, today we're gonna to be presenting unit one, intro to JavaScript. So I hope that, were you guys able to go over last week's homework or at least take a look at it? Yeah? No? Okay. So we'll cover up a little bit of material about the grid, grid system, but if you guys don't understand the HTML and CSS portion, make sure you guys do the pre-work assignment so that way you can understand it now. You won't have to worry about not understanding the HTML and CSS that we learned from last week because that's already made, uh, that's already created for you on the pre, on the starter template that I sent you guys. Did everyone receive the starter template? Okay. Make sure you download that and have it ready because we will be working on that in order to uh, fill up the tic-tac-toe project. Cool. So don't worry about the HTML, CSS portion. It's already, if you guys already took a look at the starter template, it already has all of it because we're assuming that you guys did the homework and understand everything, including the grid system. So but don't worry. If you didn't get to do the homework, you'll have a chance to do it. And later on, you're going to be like, oh, that's how it works. But in this Today's lecture, we're going to be focusing on solely on JavaScript and how to generate automated, <clears throat> automated HTML code. So make sure that you guys go over your app assignments. So I'm just going to do a recap of what we did last week. We, we did our first website. You're going to be working on making your first cat website, and that will introduce you to the basics of the CSS, grid system, as well as the, the how to make dynamic websites for mobile phones as well as a desktop so that it can look nice on both screens. For this week's homework, you're going to be doing a board game and you're going to be using a lot of JavaScript, a lot of, of fundamental JavaScript so that way you can get introduced to it. And next week, for the, the two weeks after that, we're going to be working on making our own Jiffy searcher using APIs and then <clears throat> Two weeks after that, again, is going to be Make Reddit, where you guys will create your own database, and you're going to create users. You're going to be able to create um, stories and also use a CRUD method, create, read, update, and delete. So you guys are going to be able to implement your own database and communicate with the server to make your own clone, like super basic version of Reddit, but that works. And for those that don't know about the course portal, this is where you're going to have, this is your go-to for any questions that you may have. We're going to be posting all the material of the, of the course as we go along. So right now I posted the unit zero. Later on you guys will see more units like unit one for this week where we're going to post the material for JavaScript. And it contains also resources for you if you want to get ahead and also expand on your knowledge set of web development. I've listed a bunch of resources at the end of our course syllabus, so that way you can expand or refine your web dev skills. And there's a bunch of them that you can take a look at for yourself. So if you guys wanna, I'm pretty sure everybody has a course portal, but for those for last week, you can just scan it and like have it ready on your, make sure you bookmark it too, because if you guys lose it, it's, it's kinda hard to memorize it, but <clears throat> this should be your go-to for everything. Getting help. We have office hours on Fridays, available by appointment. Just make sure to email us, either me at guilleis at uci.edu or the other Guillermo, Guillermo Hernandez. 
we both have our emails here. I also have our emails on the course portal, so you don't have to worry about typing it down or memorizing it, but just know that we're here to help you advance in learning web development. Attendance, uh, make sure you guys go and mark down yourself so that we keep track of who's been attending our course. bit.ly slash webdev, ship webdev. And at the bottom, it's going to ask you for a code, and that code is webred. Webbread. Yeah. Everybody good on the attendance? Yeah, it should work. If it doesn't work, let me know. So I can fix it real quick. Huh? This one's recorded? Okay. Alright, I seen that everybody was able to do it. So let me know if you guys weren't able to. Assignment 1 details. I'm going to go over what you guys are going to do or be working on for this weekend. You're going to be working on a concentration game. It's purely JavaScript. So that way you guys learn the fundamentals of JavaScript language. It's due by midnight Sunday and by 11.59 p.m. If you guys were not able to do the pre-work on time, that's okay. Make sure you've submitted it within the next couple of two days because we want to give everybody the opportunity to learn it at their own pace. But <clears throat> if you can't do it by the deadlines, then you will get start getting behind and then it will just start not making sense at all. And you're going to be like, why am I even taking this course? But, question. Uh, Allocate. We're, we're allocating, depending on your experience levels, if you're already familiarized a little bit with programming, it should take you about two to three hours per homework. It shouldn't take you that long. Uh, if it does, then it's okay, because always the beginning is the hardest part. Whenever I started learning something, at the beginning it was always the hardest part. But once you go through like halfway through the course, everything will just start making sense. But and I'm telling you based on from experience, when I learned iOS, I didn't get jack until the fourth week that I started doing iOS. Same with web dev. I started learning it on my own with the tech community so that we can teach it to you guys. Nothing was making sense up until like the fourth week or the fourth assignment. So that's okay. If you guys don't feel like you're making any progress, that's fine. It's, it's just a normal learning curve. Everything you see doesn't make sense, but up until like the fourth week, it goes like a straight line, and then boom, you get everything all of a sudden. Your brain just clicks. That's how it works. It's like a bike. It's when you start riding a bike, when I was little, you guys know how like, you would always fail, and then it was just that one moment where your brain just clicks and you get it. It's the exact same way with programming or whatever it is that you learn. So don't get discouraged by the amount of time that you put in. Eventually, you're going to get to the point where it just clicks, and you're like, shoot, I just feel like I took a blunt, and now I get everything. But don't take that word that I said. <clears throat> but just know that eventually you guys will start getting and understanding everything. It just takes time, okay? So the amount that you put it, the, the amount of time that you put in is the amount of progress and as well as outcomes that you will get out of it. So it's okay if you spend a lot of time in it. Do you guys have any questions before we get into some resources and then the coding portion? No? Okay. All right. Uh, make sure you guys are aware of your, our resources, Jopwell. It's like a website for, for underrepresented college students, women, black, Latinos, or Native Americans. There's a website for hooking you up with the jobs. It's like LinkedIn, but where they actually reply to you when you apply. And it comes in clutch. One of our, our last year's president for SHIP, he got his first internship at J.P. Morgan Chase in Chicago through Jopwell. And I have the code right here if you guys want to sign up for it. It really comes in clutch. And, I mean, it just helps a lot of people. And I'm, I'm an ambassador for it, too. I joined them because I do believe in what they do. And I saw it myself when, when our ex-president got it. Code Path, is it October 7th? Oh, never mind. It already passed, but Code Path is where they, you can learn web, I mean, Android and iOS development. So if you guys are not into web development, there's this also, but the deadline already passed, so it's kind of late. 
but just be aware of it because next quarter I'm going to be teaching iOS again because this quarter CodePath is teaching online right now and it's only six weeks which is pretty cool. Huh? Yeah. Buy a Mac. If you're still a student at UCI, you can get MacBooks from the ICS school. They lend Macs, MacBooks every for one week. Mm -hmm. So you just have to renew it, the lease for the Mac, which is pretty clutch. I had some students that, when they were taking my course, they borrowed the Mac from the ICS department, and they gave it to you for one week. And you just renew it. Every week, you just get another one. It's not recommended. It doesn't run very well. No, back when I started it was, and then I didn't it and it didn't work, but the thing with VMware is that you have to get like a, like a, you kind of like give your phone a key, with your phone gives out a key and you kind of get permission with a certificate, I guess, and like, you technically have to do that every time. Yeah, it's so, it's a really big hassle, so that's why we don't recommend it. You just say like, in that case, get, get a MacBook. Yeah, or you can do Android. It's still pretty cool. That one's Android is for everyone. They they have simulators. Yeah, but anyhow, so that's CodePath. But I'll start spreading more awareness about it later on once it once the fall quarter ends. We have a secret. I'm working for the informatics department as well. We have an industry showcase. It's basically a private VIP career fair. So if you guys are interested, Google's going to be there. Uh, Twilio, SendGrid, CoreLogic, if you guys want jobs from them, they're going to be there at that event. So make sure you apply and who knows, you may be, I'll see you guys at Google, so maybe. <clears throat> Alright, so before we get started, I want to talk about what we're going to be learning today. So it's a little bit of theoretical, it's only going to take us a few minutes just so I can get you guys into the, the groove of J JavaScript. Because I know, based on the feedback that I received from you guys, I know some of you are not experienced at all. So I'm going to give you a short, very short introduction on arrays and lists. So arrays and lists are essentially a way, it's a, it's a way to, to store data. In many languages, they all have arrays and lists. And for those of you who are wondering how does it work in JavaScript, it's pretty much the same as it would work on Python. The only difference is that whenever you declare a variable, you have to put var or let before the variable. And from here, an example is we take in these, all these items right here, and then we put them in our list or in our basket of groceries. Does that make sense with everyone? Pretty simple, short? Okay. I think everyone's getting it so far then. So now, how are we going to implement arrays into our, our game that we're going to be implementing today in our tic-tac-toe? So there's two ways we could do it, right? First, if you guys look at the way that we enumerate our, our tic-tac-toe, there's nine squares, right? And each square has to be filled. There's two ways you can go about it. The experts from nowadays would just say, oh, just make a, a two-dimensional array. Who knows what that is? Okay. So a few of you know what a two-dimensional array is, but screw that. We're not going to do that. Why? Because it's a little too complicated in order to, to place into our game. So we're going to do it all within one array. So you guys see what I did here? I placed these numbers right here represent the location of each spot that the, that the game is going to place an X or, is, or a, a circle, right? So the, huh? Oh, yeah, I put it. Oh, I messed up. Yeah, it's supposed to be zero, but for the computer science, we start with zero. So we're going to, each spot right here is going to indicate where we put the x or the zeros. So does that make sense for everyone? So now whenever we're gonna, whenever we wanna check for a winner, how do we check if there's a winner right here? We just check if zero is equal to three and is equal to six, right? Simple as that. Same with these. How do we check if this, there's a, a win right here? We would just check if zero is equal to four and if it's equal to eight as well. And that's how you determine if there's a, a winner in our tic-tac-toe game, right? So that's how we're going to implement our tic-tac-toe game. We're going to focus on this way of doing it. We're not going to implement a two-dimensional array because that's a little bit more hardcore. And I'm pretty sure you guys will get to that once you take your upper div classes or even ICS32. 
if you guys took that course. All right, let's get coding then. And no, no questions, right, so far? All right, perfect. Yeah, we're going to code everything. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it. Yeah. Okay. So right now, this is what we have so far in our in our project. But was everyone able to open up the project? Yeah? Okay. No issues on that. Let me make this bigger though. And I'm gonna close this. Let me just set up everything real good so that we don't have any issues with this. Mm. All right, there we go. All right, so let's go over the HTML file just so you guys can be aware of what the heck is going on right now. So you can ignore the to-dos. The only thing we're going to, I'll tell you guys what you, what we're going to be focusing on. So what we're doing here is we're adding the template from Bootstrap. If you guys did your homework, it's basically a whole template that adds all the code automatically for you, which just includes some of these things, the meta heads and as well, the metas and the heads, as well as the link towards the Bootstrap. Bootstrap is basically just a framework for that has a library, whole a bunch of components for CSS styling your website. So there, Bootstrap is the one that's in charge of making sure that your website looks nice. That's all they do. They have a library full of components that help it look nicer. And if you did your homework assignment or once you do it, you'll understand how you, you incorporate all of those things. So now, if you look down below, we have a custom style sheet. This is where we implement our own CSS code, which can be found here. But don't worry about all of this. CSS code, you guys will be making your own CSS code on the homework. In here, our main focus is learning JavaScript and how to generate the board and then also how to create the game logic so that whenever we click on the on the squares, it'll put like an X or a zero on it, right? So as you can see right now, now if we go lower, we have a couple of other things. We have our game info, a div with our game info. This is where we're going to have our title, which is right here, the tic-tac-toe. And then here, later on, once we get into the JavaScript, we're going to figure out how do we change this text to add something like winner is X or something like that. Something like that. How can we, how can we automatically generate the winner based on who actually won the game? So we're going to be working on that too. And then this is the main board of the game. So we have a container. If you guys remember from the bootstrap, container is what allows it to stay in place so that whenever you change the size of it, it won't look really bad. <clears throat> and then if you keep going down, we have the row, simple bootstrap container stuff, columns, that's also from bootstrap, container. We just put another container within a container. But this is where it gets interesting now. This is where we have our game board. The reason why we have IDs, I don't know if you guys noticed, ID winner as well as ID game board, is because those are the things that we're going to locate within JavaScript. And then JavaScript is going to be like, oh, game board, I'm going to modify this. And then as well as the, the winner, oh, I'm going to modify this text as well, this attribute. So then now, <clears throat> Our first, our first challenge that we have to complete here is how do we generate a bunch of squares for our game? Because essentially, we need nine squares, right? So we, one, one, a noob or someone that is completely new to programming would be like, oh, just put a bunch of, just put a bunch of, of these squares, and that's it. And you might say, oh, well, that works, right? But what happens after you start copying nine of these? It gets tedious. And it's just going to look really ugly, right? I mean, you might think about, oh, that's cool. We made it work. But does this look professional to you? No. 
So our first challenge is to figure out how can we automatically generate this with JavaScript. Cool. So now we'll get into the actual coding portion. I want you guys to, to cut this, cut the sample square that we had, just copy it. And now on our main JS function, we're going to start filling up some of the, the materials that we need. So first, we need our board squares functionality. Do you guys remember that? Or the, the array that we were creating? Remember how many it was going to have? Nine, nine spaces total, right? But for that, we need to declare first our board squares array. This is what's going to keep track of the amount of squares that we need. Also, if, I, if I'm starting to type a lot faster than you guys or you guys get lost, let me know so that I can stop for a bit. But this is one of the first things that we need to take care of, the board squares. Okay? Now the next thing is we need to keep track of which player is going to start the game. But to make it easier for us, we're going to make our player be the default of X. We're going to have X player be the, the first one to start the game. Now we're going to need to know how many turns have passed. Because if you guys notice, how many turns can there be until the game ends? Nine. Or eight, essentially. But we're always going to start at the first turn, which is zero. Right? And then we're going to need a variable to make sure that we know if the game is running or it's not. And for that, we're going to create a variable called running equal to true because at the beginning the game automatically has to be running. So we have our essential configuration for the game. Now we need to set up the actual game logic before we start playing the game. So for that we need to create a function. We need to call this one the generate HTML board squares. This is the one, this function right here is the one that's going to be in charge. Wait, can you guys see the font of this? Yeah? yeah? Okay. I'll make it a little bit Big just in case. Thank you. Yeah, I picked, I customized all the colors. So now we need to figure out how can we make our, we need to call setup game to generate our squares that we're going to be needing. So in here, I'm going to call the function generate HTML board squares. And now we need to also let know the question. It doesn't really matter. It matters when when you have closures. We'll get into that later on in later weeks, but it's basically functions embedded in function. And that way it'll let you know uh, it's more like a way of organizing your code. You get me? Yeah. But typically, I usually put colons when we have functions, like in this case right here. No, generally it wouldn't. It's fine, it'll still run, yeah. It's part of the community, but since, I, since we come from a more Pythonic community, I tend to stay away with semicolons because that just makes my code look ugly. Yeah. But now, let's focus on the next part. We're going to we're going to create our square elements which is what's going to let know our javascript that hey, we're going to create this object called square and here this is we're going to use these squares to manipulate the way that what the user is looking at. And for that, you're going to create a constant square elements and you're going to obtain the get element by class name. And it's going to be the board square. Make sure you guys type in correctly get elements by class name. Essentially, this function right here is calling the, the HTML and it's referencing the board square. So if you go back and look into our HTML code, our board square is this one right here. So we're creating board squares from these. Okay? Huh? 
No, you can del you you should delete it. Yeah, but not yet because we haven't used it yet. And now we're going to iterate the amount of times that we need those squares. And I'm going to do what's called a for loop, which is for var i, i is less than the square elements of i. I'll explain what all of this is doing in a second. And for the here, you do put semicolons. I plus plus, and then we were going to create an element which is equal to square elements of i, and then const square new board squares using that element. And we're going to push those squares to our array of board of our array that we have right here. So essentially what we're doing here is using the custom class that we're going to develop soon over here, our class board squares. We're going to declare the attributes that our board squares is going to have later on, not yet. But in here, all we're doing is we're just telling our class board squares that hey, we're going to use we're going to use this this div right here, this is going to be your square, okay? So in other words, it's telling JavaScript, this square right here that you guys see, that's going to be a square. That's basically all it's doing. It's just declaring what a square looks like or what it's going to be doing. That's all we're doing here. So we're going, we're iterating through all the squares and we're going to be creating nine of them and then we're just telling it, all right, all of these is a square. All right, JavaScript, that's all we're doing right here. Nothing too complicated. This will make more sense once you guys start making your own, uh, once you guys go dive into the homework, which will explain it more in depth. But for now, yeah, push. So there's no append. It's the same as append in Python. Yeah. Everybody good so far on this part? Okay. So now we're gonna go on to our generate HTML board squares function. In this function, we're now we're, this is where we're actually going to copy the the HTML that I had you guys copy. So make sure you guys copy this right here. All right, copy it, and now we're gonna let JavaScript automatically generate all the squares for us without having to do that copy paste copy paste work that we were doing previously. So here we're gonna call our board element, and we're gonna get the get element by ID called game board. So what am I doing here? Pretty simple. If you guys see the document get element, I'm basically calling referencing the HTML code. So essentially the the game board, remember the board ID that we had previously? I'm calling this. Essentially what I'm gonna be doing is alright I'm gonna insert things below after the game board div, okay? Question? Mm -hmm. No. It does that automatically. But your IDs have to be unique. If you have two IDs with game board, then it'll cause an error. It'll give, it'll say, hey, I don't know which one is uh, game board, so, but it'll let you know. So here, oh, the way how we're connecting it, yeah. The way I connect it is right here. But however, if you if you had another div that was called game board also as the ID, then it will give you an error. But this is how you connect your JS file with your HTML. You put your scripts all the way at the bottom. Cool. So now that we know where we're going to put our squares, which is under on the inside the game board, now we're actually going to start putting in some HTML code. And for that, we're going to go with our good old friend strings to do all that work for us. I'm going to call square, square HTML, and I'm going to do a for loop. Huh? Let me score it. For that one? Because I'm already setting it equal to something. So for example, if I have, if I know a constant 
it's not going to change, right? Constant is never going to change. What else? Turn. The turn can change, so it's a variable. Uh, the board squares is never going to change. I'm always going to have nine squares, and that's not going to change. Running. The game can be running, or it cannot be running, right? Do you get the idea now of variables, let, and constant? Okay. But here, we're, it's like saying we're doing a constant, essentially. But at the same time, um, you only you don't always have to declare what kind of variable it's going to be unless it's going to be a, an object. Does that make sense? Here, we're doing constant because we're referencing a, an object. It's already built in, yeah, sort of. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to iterate through the amount of times that we need the squares. So we're going to do a simple for loop var i equals zero and then i is less than or equal to nine because we're referencing how many squares our board has which is nine and then i plus plus and within that for loop hmm? it's nine it's including zero because we start it it's going to go up to eight yeah but we start at zero yeah does that make sense? It's exclusive. It leaves out 9. But if you start at 0 and you go up to 8, that's 9 total. No, we're going to delete it. Remember how I told you we're going to remove that square. No, we're going to we're going to I told you guys to copy and paste this because we're not going to use it anymore. There you go. Yeah. So now we're going to use that code from the HTML that we had. And we're going to add it to our square HTML by doing a plus equals. And here you're going to put these weird looking uh, quotes. It's like, I don't know what these are called. Do you guys know what those are called? But they're like on your top corner, top left corner. Huh? Yeah, backticks. Yeah. And then that's where you're going to paste your HTML code. From the, from the previous class. Cool. Yeah, just two. Yeah. So that's all I did. I just put all my HTML code and closed within the back ticks. Okay? So make sure you, it, it's looking like this. And now outside of the for loop, outside of this bracket right here, now we're going to add our square HTML because right now we have we basically have a variable that contains all our HTML code. Now we want to insert that into our game board. So it's going to be HTML and we're going to add our we're going to add all the HTML code to our board element. Board element dot inner HTML equals square HTML. Simple as that. Make sure that there's no mistakes in the spelling of it, otherwise it will give you an error sometime soon. But if not, if we run this, let's see what happens. Let's see what we have so far. I think it'll probably crash, but let's see. Oh, there we go, it worked. So now we have automatically generated all our squares using JavaScript. And all we've done so far is two simple functions, the setup game, which creates the squares, and then the generate HTML board squares. There's, they're, they're very different, okay? Make sure that you understand the differences, is that here we're creating like the actual object of the square, and then this function is just generating, using those objects, it'll generate them as HTML code. And then it'll input it into our, our board element, which is the game board ID and it's putting it right here so everything enclosed in these two divs right here I'm putting all my code that we just generated inside this game board and that's exactly how we want it to be perfect did everyone did you guys run it does it work on you guys yeah all right perfect so far so good <laughs> so 
Well, let's not fo focus on the reset game yet, but and the event listener yet, but we'll get to those later on. First, I want to get to the logic. So let's go now to our board square class functionality. This is where we're going to implement the logic. Oh, question? I just refresh it. So if you're on your file, on your HTML file, I just refresh it right here. Oh, how I have my file here? Yeah. So you can, oh shoot. If you go into your, in your HTML file, you right click it. And it should have the option to copy full path. Once you copy it, you go here into where you type in the URLs, and then you just put the, you've pasted it into your browser, and then it should take you to your tic tac toe file. Did it work now? Set up here. Board squares. Oh, board square. Yeah. Oops. Are you still having trouble with that? You got an error? Oh, no. You should, there should be an error. This one is fine. These errors are fine. This is just from Bootstrap. But okay. if you're not getting anything else, if you're getting something else besides this, then you're in trouble. Yeah. But so far it's, oh, but it's okay. It's because we, ha we haven't filled out our whole, our whole JS file. So you guys will be looking at some errors right now. But most of these are from Bootstrap. These are errors are from Bootstrap. So you're fine. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be document. Perfect. All right. So now let's implement. Did it work though? Or just with one square? So save your JavaScript and your HTML file, command save, and then it should automatically load it up for you. If you want to download, there's a plugin where it can automatically, it automatically saves it every time you finish typing after like five seconds. But did it work now? Did you save also the JavaScript file?
Perfect. So now that we have everybody's good on track, now let's implement the actual logic of our of our tic-tac-toe game. So first we need to figure out how do we select a square from our HTML. So for example, my question is how can I make JavaScript know that I'm clicking inside that square? Or how does it know that I'm clicking this square or this one? So for that, you have to set up our, we have to construct our board square class so that it knows the boundaries of each square. So for that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a constructor and it's going to take in the element It's going to take in an element as an input, and from there, we're going to create our, we're going to initialize the class of board square. In this case, it's going to be this element equals to element, and then this element dot add event listener. And here it's going to be click this false. I'll explain what this code is doing after we finish typing all of these. We also have this dot match equals to false. This dot choice equal to null. Okay. So what are we doing here? Remember for, on our for loop where we did a where we were passing in HTML and we were creating board squares and then we passed in an element. The element is essentially the HTML code. That's all it's referencing to. So we're constructing our board squares based on the HTML code. So now our, J our JavaScript file knows that everything enclosed in, these, in this square is an element. Okay. So now we're, we're referencing to these squares as elements. Think of them as that. And on our next line, we have this element at event listener. So all it's doing is that every time a user clicks on this element or this square, it's going to do something. And we're going to create a function that will handle the click. But here, we just add the event listener. The listeners, essentially, all they do is they just wait. They sit there and wait until actually the, until this happens. There's also another one, I think there's like double click or long click. There's many ways that you can implement event listeners, but for now we're just gonna use the most basic one, which is the click. And then here, match, this is how we're gonna keep track whether there was a match of three and the game ended. And then choice, that's just gonna determine whether it's an X or it's a circle. All right, makes sense so far. All right, so now let's figure out how do we select the square. So for example, what should I do if I click here? If I click here, I should switch turns, right? So we're going to do a bunch of things here in terms of, if you think about it in terms of computer science, there's a lot of things that goes on after you click on one box. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to go heavy into this. So first, what do we got to do? We have to, well, since we already know who the default player is, we're just going to automatically put an X right there. So in order for that, all we got to do is we're going to call this element dot query selector. And within it, I'm going to call the face container. And then here dot query selector again. And here it's, it's going to be enclosed within the face down. And then here it's going to be dot inner HTML. Okay, everybody good on this so far? Let me make this smaller. So all we're doing is that, okay, once I click on this box, I'm going to select the face container, because if you guys look at your HTML code that we're putting, each square has a couple of divs inside it. It has a face container, and then it has a face down, text center. So here we want to modify this one, right? We want to modify what's in what's in between the face down and the text center. So everything in this div, this is where we want to put. Oh, it's all done. We want to put here like a X or like player X, right? 
That's essentially what we want to do. So now let's actually implement that here. We're going to modify that and put in the the P. Uh, I hate this. And plus current player. And then we're going to make it to uppercase. To uppercase plus and then we close off our P brackets. All right, pretty simple, right? We're just we're just adding a P attribute, HTML attribute, and we're adding the current player's choice. In this case, who is the current player? Who's the one that starts it? The X, right? Now we need a we need to change the player's turn after this. We also got to put in the actual X. It's so strenuous. Question. Yeah. The reason why we're adding false is so that once the player made a move, you said it's true, so that it can't be clicked on anymore. Yeah. I was gonna go into that, but you already you figure it out. Yeah. But that's what the false is. Props for that. So. <clears throat> The next thing is element dot query selector, and here we're going to select the face container again. And make sure it's dot face container. And in here we're going to select the face down dot style dot color equals color. So all we're doing here is we're changing the color of the player depending on what they picked. In this case, we're going to have red and blue. X is going to be red and circles are going to be blue. So all we're doing here is we're setting the color of that person's move. If they were X, then we're going to set it to X color. If we put a circle, then we're going to change to circles color, which is blue. Cool. I think you guys got that so far. The next thing now is we're going to make this choice equals current player. So what we're doing here now is <clears throat> we put the X, let's say that we already made a turn and we put X. So HTML knows that there's an X, right? Because you can see it visually. But JavaScript doesn't know that that's an X. So we have to let JavaScript know that, all right, this circle or this square right here belongs to player X. And that's what we're doing here. So that way, our logic, our JavaScript file knows that, okay, this guy, this board is from player X. Okay? Pretty simple so far. And now, we're going to implement the this check for winner function and the this dot check for draw. So every time, basically what's going on here is that every time that we select a square, we're going to check if there's a winner. And also, or we're also going to check if there was no winner, then we're going to check if there was a draw, right? Makes sense? Okay. And now we're going to change the player turn by doing player equals next player. And turn, we're just going to do plus plus, plus plus turn. So, so far so good, right? So now if you, I, I'm hoping that you guys are getting into the computer science mindset where you're like, holy crap, there's so much going on by just clicking this stupid box. Like, whereas in reality, hey, come on. Whereas in reality, there's, if you guys just play tic-tac-toe on your own, it's pretty basic. All right, now let's, this is the hard part. This is where the fun starts happening. This is where we're going to implement the check for winner. So if you guys are not familiarized with array manipulation or list manipulation, it's going to get pretty rough here. So now in their check for winner function, we're going to do a couple of things. First, we need to make sure that the amount of turns is greater than four. Why? Because there can't be a winner when you have only placed three, three, um, what do you call it? Three items, right? Does that make sense to everyone? 
Usually it's from I usually it's from six to seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're gonna be done quick. But yeah, no worries. Yeah, okay, no worries. Yeah. I'll try to shorten them so that they're more concise. But like I mentioned before, usually the first classes are the hardest because I'm trying to help you guys really understand everything. But after this it'll be shorter. To the point, yeah. Yeah, no worries, of course. But for everyone who's staying here, I'll make sure you guys understand JavaScript and dream about JavaScript too. So now, <clears throat> so we have to make sure that we have had more four or more turns. Why? Because there's no way someone can win on the first four, four turns. That's just basic math arithmetics. Yeah. Uh, but since we start from zero, so it's five. Yeah. So now, whoops. We need to call our function to check sides. And this function is going to do all the, the magic of checking the sides and determining whether there's a winner or not. And we'll get into it really quick. But let's finish this function. We're going to have this match. <clears throat> so if this match, you guys remember what this represents, it's a Boolean, true or false. It's just saying that, oh, if there was a match of three, then cancel the game, right? Now we're going to be doing is document dot get element by ID winner. This is basically checking if there was a winner. There you go. And we're going to change the inner HTML equal to winner is. And here I add the player to uppercase. There you go. This is basically modifying the HTML if there was a winner. If there's a winner, then change the text on the HTML code and change that to our X or zero, whoever won. And below that, I'm gonna go with document.getElementById. And it's going to, I'm gonna set up a reset button. Because if you guys notice, we have a reset button right here, but it's not, it's disabled, so it's not active. So whenever someone wins the game, I'm going to set it to active. So now, I'm going to set the reset button dot disabled equals to false. So this is a negative negation, if that makes sense. I'm saying that it's no longer going to be disabled. So this will allow me to reactivate the restart game button. Perfect. And then I just make sure that my running variable is set to false. So that way the game knows that, all right, the game stopped. It's no longer running, so we're going to be chilling. Everybody good on this function? All right, I'll give a couple seconds so you guys can get it done. All right, perfect. Now let's go into the check sides. So if you guys notice here, we call the check sides function. And this is where we're going to do some really good, fun math stuff in terms of the arrays. So what I'm gonna do is, remember how there's, there's the way you can win, right? You can win if you have these three, you can win if you have these three, these three, these three, et cetera. So how do we make sure that we account for all of those possibilities? Arrays. We're going to create an array of sides, and it's going to be a, an array of arrays, okay? So the first one, huh? For checking, yes, but you'll see why. And it's going to be 0, 3, 6, and then the second one, guess what it's going to be? 1, 4, 7. And on the third one, it's going to be 2, 5, 8. And don't worry, I'll explain what each of these mean. And then this one, we're going to have 0, 1, 2, comma, and then this one, it's going to be 3, 4, 5, comma, and the last array, it's going to be 6, 7, 8. Does it start making sense so far, or kind of, not yet? And this one is going to be 0, 4, 8, and then this one is going to be 2, 4, 6.
I'll give you guys time to make sure you guys got all those down. All right, I think you got them done. Not yet. So, who can tell me what the first one represents? Let me show you guys the numbers again, so you guys can see it. The heck? What are you doing? Here? Oh, you can't do that. But can you guys see it? Nah, huh? Let me make it bigger. Can you guys see it now? Okay. So what do we have here? Zero, three, six, right? So what does this represent? Yes, zero, three, six. So here we're checking for vertical on the first aisle. And what do we check on the next one? We check the second column and the third column. Cool. So you guys got that one? Here we check vertically. Vertical layers. And the next one, what, guess what are we checking for these? We have 0, 1, and then 2. And then we have our next item 3, 4, 5, which are the, the second row. And we have our last row, 6, 7, 8. So this is checking our horizontal layers. It's pretty straightforward. And the last one, which one do you guys think? So we checked vertical and horizontal. Now our last one is diagonal. Yep. Cool. So now all we have to do is iterate through all of these possibilities and check if there was a match of three of them. And to do that, we're going to do a little for loop as usual. Bang. Go ahead. Okay. Something's up with my. It's not automatically indenting it. Whatever. Yeah. So I want it nice. There you go. I'll put it here. I don't know. Israel, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not the other one. So now we're going to iterate through all of these possibilities and check if there was a winner. So it's pretty simple. It's going to be done through a for loop var, var i equals zero. And make sure you put those semicolons. They're really annoying sometimes. And we're going to iterate through the sides dot length i plus plus. And now we need to know which squares we're checking. So I'm going to create a squares variable let squares equal sides of i and here so basically what I'm doing here in this iteration I'm gonna have squares is going to be equal to it's gonna be one array in this case it's going to be 0, 3, 6 so now we need to go through each of these and check if they're all the same choice no I'm just gonna declare them by variables so let s1 equal board squares. Oops. Yep. And here's going to be squares of zero. Dot choice. And here it's going to. I'm doing. I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to copy paste. And but I'm just going to change them to two, three, and these are going to be. One and two. Does that make sense what I did here? Oh, whoops. My bad. You can just copy. Once you make the first one, you can just copy paste and just change the numbers, just increment it by one. Yeah. 
And so now we need to check if they're all the same. <clears throat> if the if the square one is equal to square two, and if square one is also equal to square three. If they're all equal, then that means there's a winner, and we stop the game immediately. So now all we have to do is do a simple if statement saying if s1 is equal to s2 and s1 is equal to s3 and s1 is not null. Cool. So now we're checking if they're all equal. All right. And now what we have to do is call this dot match equals true because that means that there's a match of three. And then this, now we change the square win. This is a function that I created and it, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna change the color of the background so that it can let the user know that the, there's a match right here. So that way it's like, a, it's a visual thing for the user. Let me just make it smaller now. Perfect. And I'm gonna pass in the squares that there was a match in, right? Because that's what we have to do. And from there we just return so that we can stop the, the for loop. Yeah, pretty simple. So let's go back into our other function to see what we were doing. Oh wait, does everyone have this so far? What happened? Okay, there you go. So essentially what we did here is we're simply traversing through all the possible matches in order for the game to be ended. And if there is a match, then we're going to change the squares that, that there was a match in and we're going to set the color to a background color so that we know where was a match located. And then from there, we return. But the way that we know that our game is ended is by setting this, this.match.true. Why? Because if you guys look up here on the check for winner function, we check the sides, right? And then we ask, oh, if there was a match, then we type in who is the winner, and then we reset the, we enable the restart game button. Perfect. Now we can also check for the draw, but um, actually, before the draw, do you guys just want to finish the handle event click so that we can have something running? And then if you guys want, because it's already getting late for you guys. Yeah, let's do the handle event first so that you guys have like something feasible. So handle event, this is basically what's going to handle the clicks whenever the user clicks on one of the squares. And this is what I'm going to create. It's a switch. And here, whoops. I'm going to create the running, I mean, uh, event.type. And here, I'm going to create a, a case. So the first case is a click. And if there was a click on the boxes, then if, while, if, the, run, if the game is running, now we have to check another thing. If the game is running, and if the player is x right now, if player equal equals x, and this choice, yes? Yeah, it doesn't care much about it. Swift is the one that does. And I was, my interview today with Airbnb was trash because I was using single quotes and I, I, I didn't know what my error was until the, the interviewer pointed it out. He's like, oh yeah, you're using a single quote. And I was like, fuck. Stupid Python. Anyhow, yes, JavaScript doesn't care. You can use single quotes or double quotes, but I'm just being consistent with what I've been doing so far. So I'm using double quotes. So basically what I'm doing is if the game is running and if the player is X right now, then we're gonna select this select square X and I'm gonna type in the, it's a specific color this is where I, I specify what kind of color I want it to be. In this case, it's going to be hashtag E93636, which is red, basically a red color. And now we, we switch to O, which is the other player's turn. 
pretty simple. Yeah, three five three six. Perfect. And now we do the opposite. So if the player is not x, else if player equal equal o, and this choice is not null, then we we're going to select the the other player. So we're going to select the o or the circle. And then for his color, we're going to pick the four, hashtag four, C4, CEE. -E. C4, C4, CEE. -E. And then we're going to switch to player X. And be careful with the brackets because oftentimes where students are challenged the most are the stupid brackets, which is why I like Python personally. And I believe brackets should be removed from all coding languages. But that's just me. You kind of like them? Yeah. I like brackets. Gotcha. Everybody good on this part? Okay. Now let's go on to the next part, the change square win. This is where we're actually going to change the color of the background of the squares to know that somebody won. So here I'm just going to type squares for each. So for each square, square, let me move it up for you. There you go. For each square, all we're going to do is this is what's called a closure, which is a function within a function. Board squares. Yeah, it's like a lambda. This is basically a lambda. So instead of this in Python, it would look like this lambda square. Yeah. Yeah, but this is how you do closure. They're called closures in in JavaScript as well as mobile development. They call them closures. So what I'm doing is basically I'm, I'm creating a function that will manipulate each square. And that function, all it's doing is I'm going to change the color of it. So what I'm doing is board squares of square dot element dot style dot background color and I'm going to set it equal to a yellow color which is going to be hashtag F7 DC6F. There you go. So now we should have, theoretically, we should have something usable, something that works. The only function we don't have yet is check for draw, but I think we've progressed too much to the point that if, if it fails, we're kind of screwed because there could be so many errors where you guys could have um, messed up on. But Let's test it out. Yeah, it doesn't work on mine. Damn. Where where am I messing up? Oh, it's because wait, no, it's for the reset thing. You know. Huh? Your square disappeared? Yeah, dang it. I knew this was gonna be troublesome. Let's see. Cannot read property you kill no, that's fine. Ah, let me check. It's not detecting any clicks at all for mine. So what I should do? Hmm. Well, I'm just, I'm just seeing what I'm missing. I'm having, I have a constructor. Is it because I'm missing the? I don't think this has to do with anything, but this is one this project on family Manjetti. 
Dude, it better not be because of the semicolon. If it is, I'm gonna be so mad. Yeah, but I think I forgot to put semicolons on some of mine. Does that make sense? Let's try and check the draw next layer. Ten plus plus. Check the winner. It sets up the board, so it has to be some somewhere after. Yeah, up until that one, right? Let me see if the handle event works. I'm going to do console.log and click. This is going to check if I'm clicking or not into my function. Nope. But, oh, this one is fine. That one doesn't matter. The one, if you get something else after that one, then then there's something oh, wrong. Uh, what do you mean on the console? On my HTML. No, I'm not getting it. Where did you say? Okay, on the other screen, the right screen. The right screen. There you go. And go down. Yeah, there's nothing there. No. Should be here. Um, I'm pretty sure everything is fine. Is it because I'm missing the the these functions, the reset game? Let me check. I shouldn't need them, right? Let me just double check for each. Reset game for each square. When you close the the class, oh, when you close the class, the class? Oh, did we close it? Yeah, you did. Oh, okay. Yeah, because if it didn't. If it didn't, then it should be returning an error. Is it because of the... Uh, do we need to get anything for the event? The reset button? Let me check. Damn it, dude. I was not expecting it to not work. Wait, did you do the turn plus plus? Turn plus plus? Yeah. You're allowed to do that. Let me click on a select square. Select it. No. What about the board square dot push square? New board squares element. A class? Yeah, right here at the beginning when I initialize it. an event listener, yeah. Cause oh look, they're empty. It didn't add my squares. That's what it was doing. It wasn't. It didn't push any, any of my squares actually. Huh? Why not? Let me just double check real quick here. Cause it gets these elements. Do you see how my array is empty? Damn it, dude.
So I generate it first, then I use all those board squares and I put them into. On the. No, yeah, no, that's still the same. Let me print out my my square elements. Okay, they're there. I have my square elements, but it's not adding it. Oh, dude, I messed up okay. right here. Yeah. Okay, that's why. That's where the that's where the error was. Yeah. Yeah, this should be dot length. Yeah, my bad. Nah. Okay, now I just have another. Call me out. Call me out if you guys see some weird. Is it to uppercase? I think I I spelled it wrong. Yeah, it should be to upper case. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I got it now. It works. Yeah, so it should be spelled like this. Do you guys have it working now? Oh, it's uh, make sure it's a capital C, right here. Do you see it? Yours working? Yeah. Okay. So mine is working now, but it was just this. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but we haven't added that. But are you guys down to go through it? Yeah. Might as well. All right. You guys don't have class after this, right? Perfect. All right, then let's finish it up. But does it work now at least? Do you get the X's and the circles? No? Uh, go on the... Um... It doesn't work? Help, out, help each other out. Help each other out. Mine is a little different, but it's on. Is that any different than mine? Wait, what if you change var? What if you change let to var? Will that make a difference?
¿no? It should work for O also. Because. Yeah, it works for O on my. But. So the. 
on your constructor class, do you have this? Oh, did, did you make this one too? I think there should be an error in the select square function. Yeah. Okay, that's probably what was going on. That was it? Does it work now? The the logic though? Check the logic. Yeah? Awesome. Did you work? Yeah, you can take that off. And it should still work. Yeah, it should still work. Wait, how did she declare her variables here? The, was it on let? Were they all let? To var? 
they're all let because we don't want to we don't want to mutate them later on. You get me? Yeah. Like let means that it's set that you can't change them. It's like tuples. You can't modify them anymore. Check the check this one, the select square. Is your is your select square function good? Because he was having that error too with the select square function. It should be inner HTML with all capital HTML. Is it because what? Mm, I doubt it. No, it shouldn't be because of that. But I'll 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 keep helping you out. Let's just finish the functionality and then I'll help you out with that. What happened? Then again, I'm like copying what the heck? Them, it only like, it only works for X on yours. Yeah. Yours works on both. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. What what matters in the end is that you guys understood what I went through, and how I went through. Because at the end of the class, I'm gonna send you guys a completed project, just so you can double check it, and then from there. But if you guys want to stay a little bit longer, I I'll be able to help you so that you guys can practice debugging your own code. But Let's go with the check for draw function so we can finish this one off. What happened? Yeah, delete the return. I just put the return so that it doesn't give us any errors. Yeah, it's like a pass. And here, if we're just going to che check if that if turn is 8, which means that it's on the last turn, then, and this match is still false, so that means that we're on the last turn and there has been no match yet then we're going to document get element by ID winner dot inner HTML equals to the game ended in a draw cool and here I'm going to have the document get element by ID And I'm going to set the reset button to active. Perfect. Cool. Does that make sense so far? Okay. So what I'm doing is if all the turns were used up and there was no match, then we're going to terminate the game. We're going to finish it. We're going to let the user know on their HTML code that there's no one, no one won. And we set the reset button equal to false, the disabled feature, so that way it's active. And then running equals false, so that way it stops the game. Perfect. And then from there, you just need to add your other function for these two right here. I'll show you guys. Now we need to get these, this one, and the reset game. I already typed them up for you, but we're gonna go through each square, board squares dot for each. Yeah, all the way on top.
Yes. So essentially what we're doing is for, if you, I mean, it's pretty understandable if you read it in an English way. For each square in board squares, we're going to reset the square. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And then here, on my document, I'm going to create an event listener, which essentially, that's how it looks like. We're going to create an event listener on our HTML file so that it listens to the clicks that we're giving it. And this time, we're going to check for the reset button. So if the reset button is clicked, add event listener, click. We're going to create another closure for this, which is going to be a, we're going to call in the reset game, and turn is going to be set to zero. simple and it should be running now. There you go. Now my restart button actually works and if I click on it, it did not work. Yes. Yes. Probably. That's probably why I have that error. Restart. Uncaught cannot set type property hidden of null. What? So mine just took one out. <laughs> just took one out and it's like, what? Line 200. Yeah, it's easy. Mine is. Oh. You can just take it out. I see what happened. It was this, the canvas. It's buggy code from the other guy that was in charge of preparing the material. But I have to go through it and make sure that it's all good. Yes. Make a. I'm gonna make a mental note of that. But it should work now. And now what? It just takes one out. Oh yeah, yeah but oh, you have to delete this. This one. The it's the very last line. Like, it's one of the last lines of your code. Yeah. Oh, you delete it. Okay. And it gives you. It just gets rid of one. Did you do the four square for each square? So let's go over the main thing. So first you gotta get this function right. Does this look good enough to you? You gotta make sure that this one looks looks good. Make sure you spell board squares correctly. Um, the reset game. Why? A comma? Oh my gosh, that's the worst. What error is it? Where, where are you going to... It doesn't let you reset? Did you set the reset button disabled equal to false? Yeah, on the check for draw. Let me check. Oh wait, let me get a draw. It's kind of hard to get a draw. Watch. I'll just go line by line. Oh wait, I can't. Is there an algorithm where I can just get a draw automatically? 
That's zero right there. No, it's gonna win. I messed up again. Yeah, it's gonna win regardless. Okay, so let me let me show you. Follow this. What is it? How do you get the draw? So okay, thanks. I like pretty long. Okay. X, zero X, zero zero right now. Oh yeah, it doesn't. Okay. You said it equal to false. Yeah, I said it equal to false. Oh, you know what? It's probably because I. It's on the class the. On the select square. Let me see. Oh no, I do. Yeah, check for draw. Wait, what is turn equal to? Console dot It should it should go all the way to eight. Because I'm pretty sure it's fine. I think I know how to. Okay. Oh no. X, zero, X, zero, X. Eight. Yeah, turn is equal to eight. Is it because the game ended with a draw? Document get element by oh by oh my bad. Let's get element by ID. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, then I did. Still doesn't work? Really? Oh, make sure you spell it correctly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, how did I get in After it restarts, you can't play it anymore? Um, damn, dude, I'm gonna have to clean up the code again. Let's see. Is yours working? The chain, the eggs. Oh, because of the the when there's a draw. Mine doesn't. They all change in the board. It's fine as long as it is. It does the job. That's what matters. But um. Everything else works besides that, right? Yeah, it works, uh, and yours, yeah. it works perfectly? Yeah, yeah, yours too? So now it's just yours? Okay. Don't worry, I'll, we can all help you out. What is it that it's doing? Let's figure this out collaboratively. This is a good exercise for project management efforts. So you're saying that it, it resets, it doesn't, it resets, but it doesn't let you start the game. Okay. If we go back into our code, this should be an error somewhere in the functions of these, the reset game function and the reset event listener. Can we look at your fun uh, at your code and check this out? So does it look does it look familiar? Board squares with a okay, and 
Oh, it is. It is okay. Mm. What about the? So nothing. Everything is good here, right? Okay. Then what about down in your? In your reset. Did you delete that one line that it had before? Yeah. Yeah, there was like a canvas one. Okay. Mm. What happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The reset should be there automatically. Yeah? Oh, it works? Oh, for another class? Lol. Hmm. Let us see if <laughs> you need the you need it because um, you do need it for your yeah you need this for your function because let me see if I do it the same yeah but they, they should be enclosed because that's how you that's the proper syntax for a closure. But let me double check. Oh, never mind. I guess it does work. Okay. What about... Oh, let me start recording.